Hi, my name is Yvette D. Heiter. And I'm Arlene Salas Province. And we are the co authors of Culturally Responsive Practices in Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. The second edition is now available at pluralpublishing.com. Plural invited me to write a book on cultural diversity, and I invited Marlene to co author the book. At that point, we both had been teaching this course in culturally responsive practices for many years. And we would meet up at ASHA convention, have lunch together and discuss the limited availability of comprehensive resources to support our teaching of this course in the way that we wanted to teach it. It seemed natural for the two of us to venture into this endeavor together. And we know that um, you're looking for just that right textbook for your students that will provide them the depth and breadth in the areas of multiculturalism, cultural and linguistic diversity, equity and inclusion, that does not only provide lists and to-dos in each of those areas, but you want a comprehensive book that will tap the critical thinking skills of your students. And we have attempted to provide that with this textbook. As a profession and a nation, we're in a time in which there seems to be heightened awareness of the interconnectedness of the world and how quickly the world and our places in the world are changing from one year to the next. In this regard, there are several contextual imperatives that underscore the importance of this text, including globalization, changing demographics, and health disparities. And we talk about these imperatives as well as others in detail in the book. So we're gonna go through the chapters and just explain a little bit about the book. In chapter one, we highlight the building blocks on which the book was established. For example, uh, the first one is theoretical foundations. Second is concepts, then connections. And finally, thinking critically and dialectally. And chapter two focuses on defining concepts. And defining concepts is important because we behave in ways that are consistent with the concepts we use and the meaning we have for those particular concepts. To engage in culturally responsive practices, we need to make sure we are using concepts that also convey cultural responsiveness. We chose not to use the term cultural competence, but use culturally responsive to better reflect the journey and the ebbs and flows of our growth in this area of study. And chapter three focuses on theoretical and conceptual frameworks for engaging in work with individuals and families in culturally responsive ways. It is imperative for speech, language, and hearing professionals to use theoretical and conceptual frameworks that will guide their culturally responsive practices. We have both developed new conceptual frameworks for culturally responsive uh, practices. Uh, my new uh, conceptual framework is called Cultural Growth Profile, and Yvette's is the Pathway for Responsive and Sustainable Practices. And both of these will provide guides to your development in this area and for that of your students. Also, you will learn in chapter three about approaching culturally responsive practices using a critical lens. In chapter four was completely rewritten for the second edition. It focuses on providing culturally responsive practices using a human rights approach through a social justice lens. And then we have chapters five and six, and this is, um, here we find the relationship between culture and hearing. And we address the very important topic of autism. And we choose to talk about hearing loss from the social model of disability that says that a disability is a socially constructed phenomenon. Chapter seven, eight, and 11 focus on ways to engage in culturally responsive practices through ethnographic interviewing, observations, artifact analysis, and by working with interpreters and by engaging in culturally responsive research. Ethnographic interviewing remains a hallmark of best practice for the way 
to engage our students, patients, and clients in an initial conversation that prioritizes their questions and concerns. And then in chapters nine and 10, we highlight culturally responsive assessment and intervention processes and practices. But these sections are not a how-to in nature, but more of a conversation with you about best practices from which you can generate your best assessment or intervention processes for your client. And for example, although alternative methods are listed, how you decide which of these alternative methods to use and which is the best strategy for your student, patient, or client from a broader perspective is what will be important. The last chapter, chapter 12, focuses on global issues in the discipline and the ways to engage in culturally responsive and globally sustainable practices. You will learn about global policies such as the World Health Organization, Sustainable Development Goals, and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Each chapter includes learning strategies, uh, reflective thinking prompts, and real life case examples we felt that it was important for students to have moments to think through certain ideas that we presented, and we provide that break for them uh, with a thinking cloud and direct them to engage in that way. For teachers, we have created several supplemental materials, including PowerPoint slides, case studies, exercises, and activities that can be assigned to students to facilitate their learning. In addition, for students, we have supplemental materials that include study guides, flashcards, and additional readings. We are sure that this text will make a meaningful contribution to your course on culturally responsive practices. In fact, we have heard from many of you that you have found the first edition to be the tool that provided the key knowledge foundation you needed for your students on the use of culturally responsive practices in their work. With this second edition, we assure you that it reflects the lived experiences of students and practitioners from the very turbulent world of this past few years in addressing equity, diversity, racism, and all the isms put upon individuals. This textbook is a way to relive that world with a pedagogical context that is organized and thoughtful. And Yvette and I feel that this book can provide a smooth journey through these difficult concepts. Thank you very much and enjoy the book. Thank you.